Hi everybody, my name is Lovis and I am an ecologist and an author and I'm always looking for ways to combine my two passions and, as cheesy as it sounds, to make some kind of a difference. So which genre was basically made for me? That's right, ecofiction. Do you get the name of the channel now? Ecofiction, ecology, ecofiction, you get it. I actually only discovered this genre recently under the hashtag Cli-Fi. I'd never heard of anything like this before, and since then I've been completely obsessed with it. Honestly, I'm reading like three books at a time. I've got an audiobook for my walk to work, I've got a paperback for when I can't get to my Kindle, and I've got the Kindle for when I'm reading in bed. Using all the mediums, people. Mediums? Media? And I thought this is something I'd really love to talk to people about. So here I am. Quick fire facts about me. I love everything fluffy. Fluffy jumpers. Fluffy socks. Fluffy animals. In my spare time, I make sea glass jewelry. I love drinking tea. With my tea strainer buddies that are shaped like sharks. <laughs> But most relevant to this channel is that I am an ecologist. I started out as a marine biologist, that's what I have my bachelor's degree in, and now I'm doing a PhD in computational movement ecology with a focus on sustainability and conservation. And all that good stuff. That's the hope anyway. I'm in my last year, so pressure levels are high. Nothing like a new project to help me procrastinate. But at least it's productive procrastination. That's a thing. So I suppose on a daily basis I consume a ridiculous amount of eco-literature, even though my eco-fiction bookshelf is still in its infancy. In my PhD I read a ton of papers on modelling ecology and its consequences, conservation actions, species range shift forecasts, and climate change predictions. I really want to bring these two worlds together and show you that they can help each other, whereas right now they kind of seem to be harming each other. The news stories that you read, hear, and are told about are, hopefully, maybe optimistically, hopefully, based in science. It's really important that people not lose their faith in science, because that leaves them kind of nowhere for knowing what to believe and what not to believe and what actions to take. The problem is that scientists, and these are my people, I say this with the utmost affection, haven't quite figured out how to communicate their findings effectively. In fact, we suck at it. I mean, really, it's tragic. We love details. We are all about the details. The problem is that lots of details means the message can get lost in translation. Having lots of detail means that when people try and find a message, it can actually be different from person to person, and that's not helpful. I want to link news stories that you are hearing with research papers that are published in peer-reviewed journals with good reputation. I want to teach you how to read them so that when someone throws a bunch of scientific jargon at you, you can catch it and go, you know what, I can handle this. I also want to link what we scientists do all day with your everyday lives. So often I see people not take action and not change their habits because they themselves do not feel directly affected by climate change or the global loss in biodiversity. So I want to bring this home a little bit. Do I write academic papers that average Jane would find mind-numbingly boring? Yes, I do. Do I spend a lot of time reading scientific papers that average Jane would find mind-numbingly boring? Oh good god, yes. Do I understand why average Jane therefore does not read these scientific papers? You bet. But is it important for average Jane to get these main messages? Now more than ever. So I need to find a middle ground. And I think that ecofiction provides this common ground, where people in the know and with the tools in their toolbox to disseminate this kind of information can reach the public in a language that they understand, and in a way that readers are not going to fall asleep. One of our greatest strengths as a species is, in my opinion, our capacity for empathy. It's something that we connect with in others, and it's even a way that we assign t intelligence to other species. It's also what makes the media that we consume so influential in our opinions and emotions. Let's be honest, how many of you think sharks are the spawn of the devil because you saw the film Jaws? Exactly. Also, I love sharks and you're all wrong. But seriously, I can't count the number of times that I've cried during a film. Even animated ones. Lion King? Do not get me started. Books are no different. I've been left sobbing on planes because of the book that I'm reading. If books can mess with my body chemistry like that and influence what I'm feeling, what better medium for us to truly convey some emotional messages about some of the most important topics in conversation today? Will it change the course of climate change? Let's not get cocky, probably not. But can it make a difference, even a small one? 
yeah, I think it can. If I can inspire even a couple people to see a bit more wonder in the world that we're destroying and to take a bit more ownership and change their habits in order to protect it, or even to connect with some of the things that are happening so far away that it's not directly affecting them, I'll be glad I started this channel. If we want people to do something, we need them to feel it. Connect with the loss of the rainforest, connect with the loss of biodiversity that we're experiencing, but not be so overwhelmed by it that they lose hope. Where there's no hope, there is no action, because why take action if there's no hope? About six or seven years ago, National Geographic published an article on the point of no return, that we were way past it, that we had no hope left, that we couldn't change it, there was no going back, we were done. We'd made our bed and now we had to sleep in it. And reading that left me so demotivated and so demoralized. We need to avoid that at all costs. There is always hope. What are my plans for this channel? I'm going to be bringing you some conversational content about eco-fiction, cli-fi, solar punk, hope punk, all of these different things, and I'll tell you exactly what all of those mean. I will review books as I read them, and I'll talk about the messages that come across and what they made me think about and how we can incorporate them into our everyday conversations. And I also want to bring news stories and science to you in a way that won't make you fall asleep, hopefully. As well as that, I want to document my journey as an author venturing into this genre myself with my own writing. As any good academic should, I will be citing my sources down at the bottom, in the description, so if any of you want to read more about anything that I talk about, you can just click those links. Let me know in the comments where this takes you. I can't wait to hear about it. So congratulations, that was your induction. You are well on your way to becoming an eco-fictologist. Welcome to the nerdy side, we have cookies.